Well, we're in Healing is Here. This is not our normal. Um, then again, you know, I don't really like normal. So our church is just different. And we, we <laughs> yeah, and we're just odd people because we believe the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the truth. Amen. And so today, my first question to you is this. Is it really God's will for every person to be healed? Yes. Wow, okay. So in Psalms 103, it's one of my favorite, and I'm going to go through a lot of scripture, and I'm going to kind of move quickly. So 103 says, bless the Lord all my soul. And this is King David, and he's commanding his soul to step up and do what's right. He says, I command my soul, bless the Lord all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord all my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all of your diseases. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's healed all your diseases. Okay, verse 4 says, who has redeemed your life from destruction. Do you understand that all destruction that comes at you doesn't have authority over you? It's only got authority if you... Here we go. If you give it to him. This is your authority, right? You, Satan, you're not getting my authority. This is my authority. This is mine, right? So, am I cutting out again? Yeah. He, really did, um, he really did have a lot of things going on in, in these scriptures. But I'm telling you, if you want to meditate on some really juicy, a really good juicy, thick piece of meat right here, read these few scriptures. Who redeemed your life from destruction. Who crowned you. This is what you're crowned with. You wear a crown. Man, you might as well just adjust it because you get one too. Okay? You, you are crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's what's up on the crown of glory that God has put on you. Phew. Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, the Lord taught me this, and he told me, he said, Pat, if you want your youth renewed, you've got to keep good words in your mouth. Not just good words, but my words, because that's going to become the foundation of your youth. See, God knows how to keep you young. He knows how to keep you full of strength. Look at Abraham, and I, I mean, look at all of those. I mean, look at Sarah, bless her little heart. I mean, 90 years old and she gets pregnant. I still think, Lord, have mercy on that woman. <laughs> you know, because me being 39 and all, right? I know that's not on my, where's Patty? That's not on my driver's license. But it's what I decree, I declare, decree and declare and decree and, you know. But I mean, it, I mean, I think about that. You know why? Because she started speaking the truth. And it changed her body. Think about it. 90 year, you've known a 90 year old that's ever got pregnant? No, you haven't. But God did, and He told him what to speak. He told Abraham, Abraham He just chose to believe. He, you know, He didn't have such great faith. He just didn't have a lot of doubt. Matter of fact, He doubted the doubt. I don't think upon this. I'm not going to do that. Going out again. Okay, so come get me a mic. Hold on. Technical difficulties and all. So let me go on here. Um, he healed the brokenhearted. He binds up the wounds, Psalms 147.3. Um, and so here he says, I've, I've healed the brokenhearted so many times, guys. We're sick because of our brokenheartedness. We get sick because of a disappointment. We get sick because something didn't take place the way we thought. Broken heartedness. We get sick when all of a sudden a spouse comes in and says, I don't love you anymore. You know, or the doctor says, uh, here's a bad report. Okay. Thank you. And then he goes on in Isaiah 53, 4, it says, and surely he took. See, Jesus took. If you're sick today, you're holding on to something that Jesus already took from you. 
You know, guys, listen to me. I love you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. This is not a church for tickling ears for people. If you don't want to know the scripture, you're not going to come back. You're not going to stay around. I'm just going to be honest with you. You're not. If you want the truth of the word of God, you need to look at it and see it, and it needs to be spoken to your life. Amen? Amen. It says, surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Mm. Yet we considered him stricken by God, struck down and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. Now that's in Isaiah. And if you move over to, to Matthew 8, 14, Isaiah, Isaiah is confirmed here. It says the very same thing, that he took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Now I would ask you this, and, and I've, I've got 20 verses here. But for time's sake, what I'm going to ask you is just in going through those few scriptures, does God want people well? Yes. yes. So now my question to you is this. Um, a lot of times we look at situations. We look at people. We look at how they were healed. Most of the time we look at how they were not healed. And so you have questions because you've seen things in your life. You've seen people not healed. I mean, you've seen people die. And you might say, well, Pastor, you know, I've known people that were very good people. They were holy people. They were set on the front row. They came to church every Sunday. They were here. Why is it that they died? This is what the Lord said to me. Pat, don't focus on the ones that did not receive but rather learn from those who did. Let me ask you, uh, by a raise of hand, has God ever healed you at any time? Okay, look around, look around. God has healed you. Okay, and I understand that, you know, you may pray this time and you may receive this time, you, know, you may not. But see, we cannot judge God by other people's faith. You can't even, don't you dare judge God by my faith. You judge God by who he is, because he is faithful. Amen. And see, you can't even judge God by what's going on in your own flesh. Why? Because your flesh has to line up with his faith. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So this was another thing the Lord taught me as I am walking through a healing are my words really important? Are your words important, church? Yes. Okay. Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious are the words like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Proverbs 15, 26. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but the words of the pure are pleasant to him. What, is, what are thoughts of the wicked? Thoughts come from your mind. This is what happens. All through your life, you have heard, these are ears, you've heard all of these things that do not line up with the Word of God. And this is your mind. This is your soulless realm. And this is the key. This is going to be the key to your healing. And what takes place? The Spirit of God that is within you, we are a three-part being, the Spirit of God inside of you, telling you things that are truth. So all of a sudden, you have the Spirit of God coming up and trying to work out these things. He's trying to erase the world. How does he do that? Through the Word of God. That's the only way your mind is going to be renewed. And so a lot of times people, they're ignorant. When I say ignorant, they, they don't have an idea of how the Word of God works in you. So when they come to a healing, they're, they're really kind of on their own because they have no help from the Spirit. And I'm talking about an unborn believer. So this type of person, they, they hear all these things. This is your mind. So you're trying to believe. 
Like when the word, if you're here today and you're not, you're not a born again believer, you're trying to hear what I'm saying. But after you become a believer, you're able to hear so much better. Amen. And then even after you're a believer, you have to put the word of God into this mind. Because look at what all the things that have been in there. And these are things that you thought and you saw sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, you know, die. Now, look, I'm going to tell you this. We're gonna, we've been praying for signs, wonders, and miracles, and it's happening. There's knees been healed. There's a neck been healed. There was ears that were open. I'm talking about supernatural things already. And so the thing of it is, is if somebody steps over and dies right here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step over them. And I'm going to come to you. Why? If they've chosen. See, we don't know what's in the heart of a person when they chose to go be with Jesus. You, guys, listen. If you're praying for grandma, that's great. But if grandma's ready to go be with Jesus, your will is not going to overshadow her will. Okay, now, now something else I want to teach you. For husband and wives, I can't go off of Steve's faith. I, he comes in with me and we agree. But I can't just stand on his faith. I have to stand on my own faith. So you can't stand on... Look, guys, when you stand in front of the Lord, your wife's not going to be there. Your husband's not going to be there. Your son's not going to be... Grandma, grandma she's not going to be there. Well, she's probably going to be in heaven. But she's not going to be judging you. So when you come before her, the question is going to be asked, did you accept my son? Yes, sir, I did. Enter in. See, we've got to understand that the faith that God has given us in Romans 12, 3, God has, it says God has given you the measure of faith. So you have the measure of faith in you, whether or not you want to believe it or not. You can doubt and do without. Or you can believe God's word is true. So I want to take what God's given me. So are my words important? Yes and amen. And in Mark 9, here Jesus was talking, and I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to talk a few minutes about doubt and unbelief. I have a whole series on this. So if you want to read it and look at it, you can go to YouTube. Um, but a lot of people say, well, what about doubt and unbelief? Well, those, uh, because they put these two words together. They're not, they're not one word. They're two. You're, you walk in faith, you walk in doubt, or you walk in unbelief. Because your doubt, I call it the valley of decision. Your doubt is where you stand to make that decision. And where do you stand? Is it your spirit, your soul, or your body that makes those decisions? It's the soulish room. It's the mind. Well, isn't this getting a little age, new agey? Well, no, let's don't take it out of, let's don't take that out of balance. The word of God says that by his stripes you were healed. So if I was healed, I've got to renew my mind to what the word tells me. It's the word of God that changes my life. It's the word of God that will heal my body. And so many of us walk around sick and hurt and not knowing answers because we've not taken time to take the word of God and to clear our mind. You've got to take that time, put that word of God in your soulish room because the scripture tells you not to go by this world. You can't go by this world. You can't let that, wor that world come at you and make those decisions for you. You know, the thing of it is in healing and stuff, so many people coming to be healed and everything. And I tell people, you know, if you will start, which is my next point, what type of faith should we believe? Look, you need to start where your faith is. You can't start killing a giant if you don't even know what a slingshot is. You know what I'm saying? You've got to start where you are. And here in, in uh, Mark 9, when Jesus told the gentleman, he said, uh, the father, and he, you know, they brought, he brought him to Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't heal him. And, and so he says, look, Jesus asked him in verse 20, in Mark 9, 21, he says, how long has he been this way? And so he said, from childhood. 
And he says, and often he throws him into the fire and he's trying to destroy him. If you can do anything, Jesus, would you please be merciful and help me? See, we get into that same mindset. Lord, if you could just do anything for me. And you know what? Jesus has already done it. He already went to the cross. It's a done deal. But see, the enemy, because you're a believer, he does not want you to believe in healing. He does not want you healthy. And he surely doesn't want you trying to believe the word of God. Oh, he hates that. And Jesus, see, Jesus would not allow this gentleman to put his belief, what he was required on him. See, Jesus is if... If you can do anything, he says, all things are possible to God, to him who believes. You must believe. A lot of people, oh, just come and let me pray with you. You don't have to believe. I don't know where you get that from the Bible. It's not in the Bible. God says, believe and receive. Come and believe. And then he goes on and he says, you know, the disciples ask him, why could we not why could we not cast it out? Well, let me tell you something. If you've ever been in a deliverance service and you start, pe- <laughs> you start seeing people slither like a snake, it's like, hmm. But the one thing I've learned is that, and this is through Norval Hayes, is that when we, the students, would travel with him, you're talking about seeing a lot of manifestations. He brought stuff. I mean, they would bring demonic, all kinds of stuff. And we students would sit, I'm sitting right on the front row. And I'm like, okay, all right, God, I want to see how you do this. Because, see, I knew one day I would need to know how to do these things. I would need the wisdom, the direction, and the guidance of these men that God had me sit under. And so we see a lady, and she started just drooling and foaming at the mouth, and she was just slithering like a snake. And I thought, Oh, I just, I hate the devil so bad, but I just thought, what you're doing to this woman? And so he started commanding it, and it just started flipping and flopping, and she's flipping it all over the chairs, and she had a dress on, and I thought, woohoo, okay. Um, and she just went, she was going all crazy. And I just, just the spirit of the Lord inside me said, you know, they need to stop this, and they need to take it out. And that's exactly what they did. I thought, thank you, Lord. And so what, they, what we did is we students, we took her out to the back. And it was amazing how all of a sudden she started acting normal. Why? Because the enemy does not, he likes to make a show in front of God's people to make them look stupid. Look, you got authority over the enemy. Yeah. And so if there's something starting to manifest up here, I'm going to have Mr. He-Man back there and a bunch of the guys, I'm going to have you them haul your butt right out of here. <laughs> You know why? And then we're going to cast. But first, I have to make sure that you're a believer. If you're not a believer, do you want me to cast this demon out? And you need to tell me. You need to give me your authority. And then I'm going to take authority over it. See, Jesus had the authority here. But what he was telling him is he said, look, you've got to believe. And what did he say? I, this, this scripture just, I fussed with this scripture for so long. I believe, but help my unbelief. And finally, 20 years later, I can't say, yeah, probably about 20 years later. It, yeah, probably 15, 20 years later, the Lord just dropped it in me. He said, Pat, you believe here, which helps your unbelief here. Does that make sense? Does that makes sense. So remember, The next time you say, okay, I'm going to believe something. And then all of a sudden you go maybe a day or two or maybe an hour or two or maybe a couple minutes. And all of a sudden you hear this doubt. That doubt's not coming from here. That's right. That doubt's coming from the solar room. So then now what do I got to do? You cannot cancel a thought with a thought. You cancel a wrong thought with the word of God. That's the only thing that will move that out. And so you start cleaning up the solar rim. Now, guys, you can't do this 10% of the time. The scripture tells us that we need to keep the word before us morning, noon, and night. And if you at work, you can put your earphones in. You know, you can get one scripture 
and just write it down, put it on a sticky pad. I, I put it in my phone for an appointment. I have a thousand appointments in my phone. Steve says, your phone goes off more than anybody's. I said, I know, because God's always talking to me. What is that? That's my word that I put in there to remind me. I've got all my scriptures. They pop right up there. And that's God talking to me all day long. Those are reminders. That's the reminders I have in my phone. And that's something you can do to keep it before your eyes. And then make sure you speak it out with your mouth. So where is healing for you? Where is healing? Right here. If you're a born-again believer, the Spirit of God is within you. There is no limitation to what he did and gave for you. The healing of God you carry within your own self. Kind of quiet. That's what I'm telling you guys. We've got to learn the truth of God's word. God wor God's word says, by his stripes, you are the healed. That's past tense. Thank you. See, it was in Isaiah and then over in Matthew, when he spoke it again, it was fulfilled. What he's saying is that your healing is something that God has already called for you because he knew what you needed before you needed it. Now, how much will you choose to renew your mind to what God has already provided for you? See, this is what Jesus was saying to the father, the, the father with the boy that was sick. He was saying, if I can do it, no, all things are possible if you will believe. So how much is it that God has given to you? How much is it that you're needing? How much, how much healing do you need? Do you think that the healing, you know, like I told you guys, I think a few weeks ago, I said to you, um, you know, my back was so sore all the time. And I just said to the Lord, Lord, if you could just help me, just could remove some of the, some of the soreness and just let me go to sleep, that would be good. And the Lord said to me, I can't do that. I thought, what? He said, Pat, I cannot, I cannot give you something that I'm not. I was asking for a partial healing. When God gave, he gave it all. Look, guys, the Lord loves you so much. There is nothing he's withholding from you. We just have to renew our minds, and that's on us. But see, most churches want to say, no, you know, you got to do this. You know, they go through all the work things. You know, you know it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the things that, w that a lot of times we think that um, we're just going to put it on God. Because why? That puts the responsibility back on him. Well, maybe God, I'm just waiting for my healing. Why? Why would you wait? God's already given it. He says, come and receive. We just, and how do you do that? believe and you know Galatians 5 22 and 23 it says he has provided faith for you already like I said Romans 12 3 he's provided the measure of faith for you well how much faith do I need pastor it doesn't matter God's already provided it you do and it's one of the things that God has asked you to do make sure you know what's what's already been given to you once it's been given to you then you can receive it but now, my, my next question here is this. It, well, it's not really a question. It's something I want to say to you. It doesn't matter how you put your faith in action as long as you put your faith in action and keep it there. You can't come in and out because the scripture says when you do that, you're a man that's double-minded and you can expect nothing of the Lord. So get in the scriptures and find out what the scripture says for you, for yourself. It's going to take some time. And see, you're going to be pressing in to the truth. And then the scripture also tells you in Galatians uh, 22 and 23 about the fact that God is love, joy, peace, faithfulness. He gives that faith to you. You've already got the faith of God to believe him for what he's requiring. Really, it's not even him that's requiring it. It's you. If you're sick, you're going to require healing from the Lord. 
And if it's already been given, then what are you going to do in order to receive it? You believe. You just believe. And so in Matthew 9, where the, where the guy comes and he said, look, my little boy has died. Now look at the different ways that people believed. My little boy has died. I need you, Jesus, to come. Come put your hands on him, and then he will, he will be alive. Now that was his belief. And then all of a sudden the woman, she's crawling to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And she says within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. Now, she didn't ask Jesus to come to her. She went to Jesus and she took her healing. Now, he asked Jesus, come. And then when you lay your hands on him, I'll receive it. He'll receive it. Did they both receive? Yes. Did they receive? Did they have the same faith? No. They believed differently. Not that God couldn't do it, but in the way that God would do it for them. The way God wants to bring your healing is how you are going to see that God is going to do it for you. Pray in the spirit. Lord, how can I walk in this? And be, be truthful. Be truthful in your faith. Because you've got the faith of God, but you want to make sure that you, like I said, you can't go out there and kill that giant until you start picking up the slingshot. You need to practice a little bit, right? Well, you, the next time you get a headache or, or whatever, start speaking to it. Stand on that. Because everybody in here raised their hand that I've been lay, I have been found favor and I have laid and been sick, but God has healed me. Remind yourself of that. That will stir your faith back up. Does your faith grow? No, it doesn't. You just choose to use it or you don't. People that walk in faith, they say, you know, Jesus says, oh, you have great faith. He wasn't saying his faith was bigger. He's saying, man, you are choosing to use your faith. That was the centurion in Matthew 8, uh, verse 8. He said, now this is what he told Jesus. Jesus. Jesus says, oh, I'll come. I'll come and heal him. He stopped the Lord. He said, no. Lord, you just speak your word, and it'll be done. And it was done. And the, I mean, I could just go on and on. The blind man, what did he, Jesus sent him to the pool. Why did he have to go to the pool? Because the man knew, he knew that this man that was blind, Jesus knew what it was going to take to get him healed. He put inside of him what to do. He came, he listened to what Jesus said. <laughs> Listen to me. He was blind. Do you get it? He was blind and Jesus sent him to the pool to wash. Like, okay, let me get there. You know, but, but so many times when God is going to give you something for you to walk through your healing, it may sound a little strange. It's okay. Let God do it. Amen? <laughs> All right, let me close. In John 10, 20, it says, Now Jesus did many signs and wonders in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but are written so that you may believe and that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Son of God, and that you may believe and have life in his name. Now, in Mark 16, 20, it says, And they went forth and they preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, church, today, was the word of God preached to you? So then the Lord is here working with you. Jesus is here confirming his word. How? By signs, wonders, and miracles. The only thing that's required of you is that you believe what Jesus said is true. Amen? Amen. You receive today, church.